man. I just wish that I could understand, okay, I really want to get an A, but the only thing standing in my way is my understanding of mass spectrometry. I'm not even sure what's going on with mass spec. If only there was some way that I could understand what is going on. George Bailey, I heard that you aren't understanding mass spec. What's going on? I'm just not getting it at all, from how the mass, mass spec machine works to how to read the data produced from the machine. Well, it's a good thing that I know a lot about mass spec, and I can possibly help you and put you in the right direction. Let me show you the way. All right, so let's start with the information we can get from mass spectrometry. The main thing is we can find the molecular weight of the original compound and all the fragments that break apart during the process. So using this data, we can determine the molecular formula and even certain structural features within the compound. This is a setup of a basic mass spectrometer. The sample starts at the inlet before it is introduced at the source. At the source, everything has to be in vacuum conditions in order to create a controlled environment for such precise measurements. At the source, the compound is broken into fragmented ions using strong electrical and magnetic fields and high velocities. After it is detected by the machine, a signal runs through a computer and a lot of programs before it is turned into the chart that we analyze. Oh my, Clarence, this graph looks so confusing. I don't even know where to start. Don't worry, George Bailey. It's not difficult once you get the hang of it. Let me tell you a little bit about the graph, and then you won't be as confused. How does that sound? That sounds awesome. So first and foremost, the x-axis represents the mass to charge ratio labeled m to z. On the y-axis is the relative abundance of the ions detected, in other words, how much of the fragment is present in the sample. Okay, that makes a little more sense. So the x-axis shows the mass to charge ratio, and the y-axis shows the relative abundance of the fragment? Exactly. So what are all the different numbers on the graph? Those numbers represent the mass to charge ratios of the detected fragmented ion. For example, on the very left side of the graph is the fragmented methyl group labeled 15. In methyl group, there is one carbon and three hydrogens. Carbons weigh 12 grams and hydrogens weigh one gram each, equaling at 15 grams. Wow, that's pretty easy. So the same can be said for all the other numbers? Exactly. If we look at the group at the highest relative abundance, also known as the base peak, you we will see the number 43 written above the graph. Do you know what that means? That would have to mean the fragmented ion would be a propyl group, right? You're right. It's also important to note that the fragmented ion with the highest mass to charge ratio will be the molecular mass of the original compound. Okay, so looking at this graph, we see 72 is the highest mass to charge ratio. That means that 72 would be the molecular mass of this compound, right? You're exactly right. Pentane has a molecular weight of 72 grams, which is what the sample molecule is. Thank you, Clarence. You've made this so much easier to understand. Oh, so that's how mass spec works. That actually makes sense. Yep, just remember to look at the data in order to determine the molecular weight of the unknown molecule. Take your time and it's not too bad. Thank you, Angel. You rock. I finally figured out mass spec. I think I can finally earn that A. Woo! Good job! Every time the bell rings, a student earns an A in OCHEM. 